This week, we're gonna take a look at how you can turn a photo like this, which is nice, but perhaps a little bit flat, and maybe a little bit boring into a photo like this, where there's a bit more kind of, mm, a bit more something going on, a bit more spice going on, a little bit of stylization. It's actually super easy. We're gonna take a look at Lightroom Classic. Let's get into it. It's Tutor Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, mmm, a fresh photography tutorial. Let's dive into Lyrum Classic and take a look at how we can transform this photo. Now, this kind of technique, this what we're doing, doesn't work for every photo, but for some situations, it can really help to kind of bring to life a photo that is otherwise a little bit flat and not boring. I mean, I like this photo of this Robin, but you know, it just needs a little bit of, mm, needs a bit of something. And sometimes it's fun to stylize your photos a little bit, play around with different colors, saturation, things like that. That's essentially what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna play around with a little bit of the light, right, exposure in different areas of the photo and play around with the colors as well. So let's take a look. We've got this photo here. All I've done so far is cropped in. So we can take a look at the original crop. If you see here, all I want to do is get a little bit closer to my subject. It was a nice high resolution camera. I think it was a Nikon camera. I think it was probably the Z7 II, I want to say, which means it was quite a nice sort of high resolution photo to begin with, which meant I had more room to crop in. But First up, we want to probably do a little bit of something to the photo overall before we start messing with the colors. So I'm actually going to just bring in some contrast because it feels a little bit flat. I'm going to try and just bring those highlights down a little bit, shadows up a touch, just balance this out a bit, a little bit of clarity, a bit of texture. Vibrance I'm going to bring up as well, but we're not going to mess too much with that because we're going to actually play around with that separately in a minute. And actually, just as some very basic adjustments, I'm pretty happy with where we've got to. The main kind of panel that we're going to be looking at for this photo is the HSL panel. This is where we can affect the hue, saturation and luminance of each color channel. And it's going to be a big part of what we're doing as well as masking our photo. So let's take a look here at the, I think we're going to start with the hue. I actually want to just bring that orange down towards the reds a little bit, just to, just to bring the orange on our, our Robin friend here just make it a little bit richer. Then we're gonna move over to saturation. So you can see here, we've got all the different colors. I'm gonna immediately start by desaturating the greens in the background. I'm gonna bring the yellows down as well. You'll always find there's a bit of yellow in the, in the greens as well, especially if you're shooting in the forest like I was here. We're gonna bring a little bit of the purple and magenta down as well. I don't think there's much of that in the photo, but already we've made a massive difference to the look of the photo. We don't wanna to go too crazy because I wanna I want to leave a touch of color in that background. So let's go over to the luminance now. This is where we can affect the brightness of each of these colors. So let's bring the yellow down a little bit. It's going to darken that. But the green, I think, is where we're going to see a bigger difference. Not massive, actually. So we're going to do some other stuff to, to darken that a touch. But you know what? That's looking... That's looking not too bad. We're already getting that kind of dark, moody, stylized feel to the photo. And we've done a lot of that through this HSL tab. So coming back up to the top here, I think I'm actually going to bring the, the blacks down a little bit. But what I'm going to do is mask a little bit around our Robin friend to make sure that he's not getting too kind of, you know, dark himself. We want to make sure our subject is nice and bright. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and use a brush. Just going to brush onto his face. And I think I'm going to bring it down across this right side and bring the exposure up just a touch like that so that we keep a nice bit of detail and brightness there. And then I might even go in and do another brush just down his other side and just darken that a touch, lean into a little bit of the dimension of the light here on our subject. And then what I might do is actually, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken the underside of these branches a little bit as well. So all I'm doing here is, is painting on essentially a bit of negative exposure to darken some of this. I wanna, I wanna just make sure we're, we're getting some slightly dramatic shadows. So let's do that. We don't wanna go too crazy again because less is more, right? A little bit of subtlety goes a long way. And similarly, actually, I might even come in and do a linear gradient, I think from the right down onto our Robin. So we're kind of playing with the lights now. I wanna do something like, something like this. Just gonna move that. Let's just brighten this. I want to I want to simulate or emulate 
sunlight coming in from that top right corner. We're going to bring the dehaze down a little bit. Something like that, right? I think that looks quite nice. What we might want to do is actually darken the overall photo just a touch. I'm actually going to go ahead and bring another linear gradient in from the bottom left, something like this, and darken that. So we're getting a little bit of contrast there from darker over on the left and lighter on the right. Let's do another radial gradient, actually covering most of the photo like so. And we're going to actually click invert and bring that exposure down as well. That's going to darken the photo, give us almost a bit of a vignette to the photo. Now, I think that's actually looking pretty good. Let's look at before and after. This is before. You can do this by pressing backslash on your keyboard. This is after. So we've made a massive difference to the look of the photo here. We can also press Y to see a side by side. So absolutely, this is much more stylized. Oh, we've done a lot to it. It's a much more exciting photo, right? Much more interesting, visually interesting photograph. I do think that maybe I might want to come in and just do another radial mask. Just just sent it over the eye there and just bring the exposure up a touch there as well. Because I want to make sure that the Robin's face is nice and exposed, right? Nice and bright. So that's looking actually pretty good. Now, if we really want to accentuate the darker background, we could actually go in and do another mask here, create a new mask, select a background. And this is going to select everything except the subject. So in this case, it selects everything except our Robin friend. And I could just darken that down a little bit with the exposure, maybe bump the contrast up a little bit bring the blacks down a touch as well. And if we come back to the overall photo, I'm just going to bring the whites up a touch just to bump that contrast even more. And I'm really happy with this. We've got a nice pop of color on our subject, but otherwise we've got a very kind of moody, interesting, very high contrast feel to this photo. One more before and after. So this was where we started, reasonably flat actually, uh, and, and fine, a fine photo, it's completely fine but I think that this is much more interesting. And I actually think this photo lends itself really well to this kind of style because you've got that, that vivid pop of color in the middle and then the darker background is not as important, right? We don't need the green in there. In fact, maybe it's a little bit distracting. If you come back, it just feels a bit washed out. It's not that interesting. This is much more interesting. And actually, I'm very happy with this photo. I'm a big fan of photographing small birds. I just think they have so much personality. They're so interesting. There are some big birds around here as well. And actually, there's a cormorant I really want to photograph. We'll get there. We'll get there. But for now, I'm actually pretty happy with this photo of a robin. But I'd love to know, is this something that you would ever try? Is this something you do ever go for? Are there times when you think that it works particularly well? Times you think it doesn't work particularly well? I'd love to know what you think. Would you prefer this photo with all the color, with the green, all of it? Let me know down in the comments. That's always interesting. I'm always interested in people's opinions about how photos, you know, it's all subjective, right? It's all, it's all different opinions. So it's interesting to learn what different people think. Otherwise, you can see a full list of the kit used for this photo, as well as all the kit we use to actually shoot these videos as well. We're going to have some fun tutorial Tuesdays coming up in the near future, autumnal themed stuff. We're going to have some Halloween themed stuff. Let me know though, if there's something specific that you would like to see in a future tutorial Tuesday. Now, with all that said, I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.